Look at example number 11. In this example, we're asked to find the power output of a car that accelerates from 30 kilometers an hour to 100 kilometers an hour in 10 seconds. So first, uh, I would probably just stop the video and, and give it a go yourself, and then maybe then take a look at the answer and see if you can get the answer on your own. Now, there are a variety of ways of solving it. Try it on your own before watching this video. Okay, assuming that you have already solved it, I'll show you one of the ways, or maybe maybe a couple of ways actually, as as we go through here. First, I would write down the given information. We have the mass of the car is 1,200 kilograms. We have uh, it accelerates from an initial velocity of 30 kilometers per hour to a final velocity of 100 kilometers per hour, and in a time of 10 seconds. And we're looking for the power. So there are a variety of ways of doing it. I, I, you know, using this problem in the past and over several years, I've noticed that so many different ways that people approach it. You Normally people will start off with force equals work over time. And then they're thinking, okay, well, how can I calculate the work? So the common approach people would use is, well, work is force times displacement times the cosine of the angle divided by the time. And so they're thinking, okay, well, um, I assume that the car is going, has a force acting on it in the forward direction, you know, from the ground acting on it, and it's moving in the forward direction as well. So the angle, by the way, would be zero degrees. So they would say, okay, force times displacement times the cosine of zero degrees over time. And the cosine of zero degrees is just one. So we have force times displacement times, or divided by the time interval. So you have the time interval, um, and then what I would see is most people would try, okay, let's go ahead and find the force, and you can find the force by using, say, mass times acceleration. Uh, and then you're thinking, well, I need to find acceleration, so you might use an approach of V equals V0 plus AT and solve for the acceleration. And once you get the acceleration, then you could find the, uh, oh, it looks like we'll have to find the displacement. And you might use another kinematics approach of V squared equals VO squared plus 2A delta X. And delta X would re represent the change in R, the displacement, once you know the acceleration, by the way. Now, one thing I should point out as you solve it this way, if you were to take this approach, remember that power is in joules per second. All right, so that means so the time's already in seconds, but you're going to need to do what to these speeds? These speeds are in kilometers per hour, so you're going to need to convert them into meters per second. So if you do that, you get about 8.3 repeating meters per second for 30 kilometers per hour, and 27.7 repeating meters per second. And so when you plug that into here, you'll get an acceleration of 1.94 meters per second squared. And then plugging in the speeds here and here and this now newfound acceleration, you should get a displacement of 180.5 repeating. Um, meters, or just meters, and this, by the way, is 1.94 with fours repeating. And now that you know the acceleration, you could find the uh, force by plugging in the acceleration and the mass in there, and you should get a force of or net force of 2,333.3 newtons with three repeating here. And so now you know the the displacement the force and the time and so you can put your power in here which would be two three 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 newtons divided by or multiplied by 180.5 and then all of that divided by 10 seconds and this should give you around 42,100 say i'm just gonna round this out to three sig figs uh, watts or 42,000 42.1 kilowatts, which you could convert to horsepowers by multiplying by one horsepower over 746, or actually since we're doing kilowatts, 0.746 kilowatts. And that will give you a power of 
6.3 horsepower. But you know what? This, this in the end is not the fastest way of doing it. I'm just showing you this so you can maybe uh, appreciate other ways that you could do this. A faster way of solving this, maybe you thought of it this way, is power equals um, work over time, but the work is a change in energy. Remember the work energy theorem. And so the car, since it's accelerating, it's gaining kinetic energy. Right? Let's assume it's not going up a hill or down a hill, so it's only changing in kinetic energy. So the work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, or delta K, and the change in kinetic energy would be the final kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, minus the initial kinetic energy, one-half mv zero squared, divided by the time. And so you could maybe rewrite this as this, and plug it in. And you should get the same answer, 42,100 watts. It's not the only way either. I've, I've seen other people do it different ways. You could use power equals force times velocity times cosine theta. Since this is the average power, then you should be using the average velocity. Assuming this is accelerating at a constant rate, then your force would be, uh, which we've calculated earlier, 2,333 newtons. Your average velocity would be the average between these two values, so 8.3 and 27.8 divided by 2 in meters per second, and then multiply by the cosine of 0 degrees. And this should give you 42,100 watts. Maybe you could find even another way of doing it. There's a variety of ways of solving it. All right. So sometimes it's good to know these shorter ways when it comes around to tests and whatnot. Okay, that's it for example number 11.